You're watching WTBD Channel 11. From across the heart of Carolina, this is WTBD 11 News. With Larry Stogner and Miriam Thomas. The exclusive AccuWeather forecast with Mike Kaplan. And all the latest sports with Ron Savage. Now, WTBD 11 News, Night Watch. Good evening. There is great joy in Granville County tonight, but total frustration in Raleigh. State leaders today basically vetoed putting a hazardous waste incinerator in Butner and in the process undid several years of work by the Hazardous Waste Management Commission. In the end, it came down to a simple majority vote by the North Carolina Council of State. Nine elected officials, including the governor and lieutenant governor. And when the smoke cleared, the whole thing had been dumped back in the lap of the General Assembly where it started. More tonight from WTVD's Dave Bullock. All those who are in favor of the motion will vote by raising your right hand. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. When only Governor Martin and Lieutenant Governor Gardner voted to provide land for the controversial hazardous waste incinerator, and seven Democrats voted against, the project died. The Democrats had thrown up all kinds of roadblocks all afternoon, signaling they would vote no. Mr. Hennett, I'm concerned a little bit about the integrity of the process. Uh, Our guidelines right now are designed, in my opinion, in a very uh, disastrous manner. The, the Hazardous Waste Management Commission had tried to make the last-minute case that the incinerator project was needed. Granville County residents, on the other hand, argued successfully that selection of Granville County had been done unfairly by the commission. In the end, the vote was the Democrats against the Republicans, 7 to 2. The issue was whether to take land away from the Agriculture Department and put the incinerator on it. The Democrats said no. Governor Martin threw in the towel. That nothing will go forward from this point. The commission is out of money. The commission is out of sights to look at, and the matter, therefore, will rest with the General Assembly. An angry Hazardous Waste Management Commission chairman also called it quits. I do not believe that this decision was a good decision for North Carolina. Yes, I will submit my resignation to Governor Martin, and I will do that next week as soon as I have had a chance to consult with the other commissioners. Other commission members could follow Turner, and that would likely put the group out of business. So what happens next? It was the General Assembly that started this project that came off the tracks today, so it looks like it'll have to be the General Assembly that starts all over again. Dave Bullock, WTVD 11 News, Raleigh. Today's proceedings were carefully monitored by South Carolina Governor Carol Campbell, since most of North Carolina's hazardous waste is now shipped to a facility near Sumter, along with waste from four other states. Today, Campbell said North Carolina's failure to meet the December 31st deadline for picking a site will lead to its expulsion from the five-state waste agreement and to our denying North Carolina access to South Carolina's hazardous waste facilities. Despite that dire warning for the state, opponents of the hazardous waste incinerator have much to celebrate. And that is just what they did earlier tonight at the Butner Sports Arena. Still, as WTVD's George Mallet reports, that celebration was tempered by the fact that their battle is not necessarily won. Once, they were an angry bunch, protesting, even screaming to get their point across. This picture of a seething Elaine McNeil was seen more than once on this broadcast. Her face, and others, spoke of frustration felt by an entire county. Now, McNeil has calmed down, somewhat. I'm no less dedicated to that notion, and I'll do it again. And my anger and frustration haven't subsided because this whole process is so ridiculous. A sentiment found throughout the Butner Sports Arena after the Council of State torpedoed plans for a Granville County incinerator. These people seemed hopeful that the tide had finally turned in their favor. If this is a room filled with renewed optimism, it is also guarded optimism. The principal players here make it clear that their fight is far from over. We celebrate like hell tonight, but don't lose your energy. We've got a long way to go. Attorney John Pike, who has been a strident voice against the incinerator, still has a lot on his mind. He doesn't like some of the things he heard at today's Council of State meeting. Phil Kirk and some other guy from North Carolina Business and Industry said that that was going to happen. Just flat out said that if we don't get our incinerator, then people are going to start, their people, North Carolina business and industry is going to start dumping it in the rivers and on the side of the road. And I took it as a threat. If they dump hazardous waste in Granville County, Pike says they'll go to jail. 
A comment illustrative of the mood here. These people realize they've won little more than a reprieve, and they say they won't stop their fight until that reprieve turns into a surrender. In Granville County, George Mallet.